Hey everyone, um, since I'm a Florida lawyer, I wanted to do a quick video on some possible solutions to the Florida eviction crisis, really, or looming crisis. <clears throat> So you probably already know, if you know anything about what's going on between landlord and tenants, that Governor Ron DeSantis has issued an order um, which places a moratorium on evictions, of certain evictions, until September 1st. And one thing is, I think is important to know right off the bat is that he has not halted all evictions. The, court, the courthouse is still processing evictions it's just that he said that if someone was adversely affected by COVID-19, then they can't be evicted until after September 1st. And he adversely affected is defined in the order. Um, you can look that up. I might link it below in the comments, but, or in the description, but Essentially, you need to have been financially affected by COVID-19 in order to have a defense to eviction right now. And before I keep going, let me just say, I am a Florida personal injury and accident lawyer. So please uh, don't call my office about evictions because we cannot help. We do not get involved in eviction matters, either on the side of the landlord or on the side of the tenant. I'm just sharing this information as a public service type announcement for people who are confused about the, you know, their options right now. And also please subscribe and, and hit the like button if you find this to be helpful, but please subscribe because I, over time, I'm trying to add videos of this nature where there's something in the news and there's a legal impact and just sort of sharing. So the first important thing to know is that this moratorium on evictions does not stop back due rent from accumulating. So it's not a huge help. I mean, it's helping temporarily, but it's not helping, you know, people who are financially distressed, obviously, if they continue to, to build up back rent, you know, let's say their rent is $1,000 a month <clears throat> and there's a moratorium for, I don't know how long it's been in place, but let's just say three months. If they didn't have $1,000 to pay their rent, at the end of three months, they're obviously not gonna have $3,000. So that's just, it's pretty much just building up a huge backlog of people who are going to owe more and are ultimately going to be evicted if they, they didn't pay. So the best solution is to try to work something out with your landlord. Well, actually, I'm going to mention another solution a little bit later that's kind of creative, and many people will just reject it out of hand, but I do think there is one other solution, but... If you want to stay in your current residence, the best solution is to try to work out something with your landlord. Now, that's not saying they will all do that. It's up to them to do that or not do that. But really working out some sort of payment plan is your, is your best option. So if you are unable to work out something with your landlord or you simply have no money whatsoever to pay toward rent, which would be understandable right now. Many people absolutely cannot work. They lost their job through no fault of their own because of COVID-19. If you really cannot pay your rent, then you might wanna contact, a, a, if you're in Central Florida and there's like 10 counties where there's a legal aid type organization, I don't know exactly how they work, but they're either pro bono attorneys or very low cost attorneys who help with eviction. And that organization is called Mid Florida um, Community Legal Services of Mid Florida. And I will link to, to their website below. That would be the, the best place for tenants who are facing eviction to, you know, to try to get some sort of legal help or advice. I can tell you that since I'm a lawyer, um, well, I should say, despite the fact that I'm a lawyer, I really had no idea what was going on with evictions and you know i'm not i i keep up with my own practice area which is which is personal injury and accidents so i didn't know what was happening i was i read the governor's order but i had heard in the news that there was a complete you know moratorium on evictions i was really surprised to learn when i read the order that that's not true it's only if people were adversely affected 
Oh, and P.S. There is there was a federal law, not a state level law, but a federal law that prevented evictions through a certain date, which has already passed for those who um, where the landlord had some sort of federal assistance. I'm not familiar with the details of that law, but just know there, there was a federal law and, and Congress could pass another set of relief like that. So it really is in that sense, it's the legal issues can get complicated, but unless Congress passes a new law to that effect at the current moment, that federal piece has expired and, and we're on uh, today's August 5th. So that's not going to be any help unless they pass a new, a new law. But I contacted the, um, the clerk of court's office because even though the order said that only tenants who had been adversely affected um, would have a defense to, you know, to an eviction proceeding, I just wanted to know what they were doing. So I emailed the clerk of court and received back a reply that they are still processing evictions. This is in Orange County. Other counties might be different, but they are still processing evictions and that if the tenant cannot pay, they need to submit something called an affidavit, which is a sworn statement. You really need a lawyer to help you with that. So again, I would try that um, community legal services of mid Florida, um, an affidavit saying that you, you, you know, what the financial impact to you was. And then the judge would decide. So no guarantees there. You definitely could potentially be evicted right now. And again, with a little another asterisk about this, the federal law, if the, if the action was instituted at the time when the federal law was in place, then maybe you have some other kind of defense. But I am not an eviction lawyer and you should not try to be an eviction lawyer. And I cannot give you advice on what's going to work and not work. My best advice to you is that there are some narrow legal options and you should contact, you know, try to find a legal aid lawyer if you're a tenant who needs help. But I can just tell you that overall, the, the legal options are limited and at least so far, they're not going to help you as of August 5th, they're not going to help you with any back rent issue. That could change if they pass a new law. But as of right now, you know, it's, it's really, to me, it's really, it's just buying you time where if you know you're not gonna be able to pay, you should be using that time to find another place to live. Another thing is that one, I, I just read a Florida Bar article on evictions and one lawyer who represents a lot of landlords was saying, you know, there's this huge misconception that landlords are these, you know, monopoly, monopoly money type guys driving around in, in tuxedos and with, you know, more money to do whatever they want with. And that's just really not the case. A large percentage of landlords are just normal people who not only have mortgages and maintenance and renovation expenses and stuff like that on their properties, but have their own bills to pay. And, you know, in other words, you might have charge a thousand dollars rent and owe a thousand dollars in a mortgage. Or you might not, but there are other expenses associated with the upkeep of property. And many of these people are not wealthy individuals. So my opinion is that Congress, the federal Congress, needs to pass a law that actually provides money and puts it in the hands of tenants. This should not be put on the backs of tenants or landlords. Um, we're not talking about huge corporate landlords. I mean, if they want to pass something that affects huge corporations who can afford it, you know, that's one thing, but I hate to see landlords and tenants pitted against each other when really neither party is at fault. And so um, I really hope that Congress will, will provide, you know, ongoing money as they did with the $600 addition uh, to unemployment benefits packages per week over whatever period of time. Something that like that needs to be continued so that people have the money to pay their bills. And just another couple of points to, to tenants. Evictions will, you, you know, if you are ultimately evicted because of back rent or something, that's going to put a mark on your uh, 
on your record essentially so that future landlords if they want to talk to your prior landlord or if they check your name in court records are going to see an eviction on your on your history and so you know you really do want to try to avoid eviction for that reason if there is any way for you to pay your rent obviously you should go ahead and, and do that another point is that once evictions um, resume when they start again and I've, I've seen a lot of people confused about this in the past just here and there just in conversations with people who've had issues with paying their rent it is very important to understand and this 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 applies to both evictions and foreclosures it is just not going to be a defense at all that you have some really great reason for not having the money to pay your rent or to pay your mortgage. That's just a harsh reality. So a lot of people, they, if they're facing something like that, they believe that if they just can talk to the judge and they can explain how terrible the situation was, how unfair, how they lost their job, how they have, you know, I mean, they could even, it, it, you literally could have, um, I mean, I hate to say this so, so harshly, but it's the harshness of the law. You literally could have terminal cancer. And if you owe the money, it is no defense to an eviction. The only question for a judge in an eviction proceeding, well, I don't wanna say the only question. There are some limited defenses. Um, but you still have to be current on your rent to have a defense to an eviction. So the bottom line is if you owe money, you're really not gonna get away with continuing to stay in a property in the normal world. Now, if they pass a law that says you, you can stay in the property, that's different. But so far that hasn't happened. We just have this temporary moratorium on certain evictions. One word to landlords is that some landlords have taken matters into their own hands by either changing locks on their properties or um, turning off utilities, that kind of thing. That really is a bad idea. You should, as frustrating as it is, allow the court process to work and comply with the law because, you know, it, that's a violation of the tenant's rights for you to do that. So, um, you know, no, everyone is in a difficult spot right now, whether it be landlords or tenants. Obviously, tenants are in a significantly difficult position if they lost their job due to COVID-19. Um, but, you know, we all need to try to, to work together and work out um, agreements where possible. But we're not possible. And in some cases, it's not possible. I mean, let's say a restaurant has stopped serving or has, um, you know, laid off 80% of their workforce because they have absolutely no business and someone was a server at a restaurant and they can't find another job. I mean, maybe they can find another job, but if they can't, that what are they supposed to do? And, and to make matters even worse, they might be sick or have a family member who's got, you know, um, very compromised health or have very compromised health themselves. So they're facing, you know, homelessness versus um, risking their lives to go out and earn more money. So I really feel like there is just no easy answer again for really for anyone in this situation, which is why I hope that Congress will you know, pass more financial relief to help everyone get through until, until we're on the other side of this pandemic, really. One last thing, I mentioned that I would share one other idea, and I hope um, this doesn't come across in um, a bad way to anyone, because I, I certainly don't mean it. I mean it to be helpful, not to be insulting. <laughs> I really don't. So let me just tell you, uh, just as a little bit of personal background so you understand, um, I was raised in a family with no money and we rented our house for my entire life. And it was a very poor house and um, I mean a very low income neighborhood. And so I definitely understand 
the feelings of tenants and the housing insecurity feeling. But um, as it just turns out, kind of a weird uh, turn of events or whatever uh, history here, my husband and I recent, uh, you know, over the last probably five years got into, we, we purchased a used trailer, which we renovated because we didn't even know whether we would ever use it. This was for camping and a van to, to, to um, tow the trailer. And over the course of that, we started watching this guy called um, Bob. His name is Bob. He, he, his, his YouTube channel is um, Cheap RV Living. And I'll tell you, even though I have overcome that housing insecurity, um, thankfully, I, I, through a lot of hard work, I, I was fortunate enough to get into a position where I'm really not worried about you know, losing our house. But there's still that deep down feeling that never really goes away that anything could happen. Um, you know, I could, I could have some major combination of crises I mean, you never know. I don't expect, you know, to ever face that problem, thankfully. But it's still that housing insecurity is something that has stayed with me despite earning money and despite um, completely overcoming it from all outward perspective. So I can just tell you that watching this Bob guy and, and other people like him that you can find on YouTube has helped me to know just in through every part of my being that we would never even if we somehow got sued and had a major illness and all kinds of stuff um we would never have to like live under a bridge or live on on the streets or something like that and the reason is because of the option of living in your vehicle preferably a van but he actually has a lot, I know that sounds bad, but a lot of people who follow him have found that to give them a huge sense of just independence and freedom that they never had before. And Bob has done a series on what to do if you're evicted. So go to, you're already on YouTube, search for Chief RV Living and watch his channel with an open mind about what to do if you're evicted because you, you, you can um, build up, save up for a van or a used trailer. I mean, he does again have options for living in your car. Obviously that's not the ideal, but he has like, you take out the seats and you put in plywood and um, you know, there, there are federal lands where you can, you can live out West. And there are also a lot of cheap um, state parks out West where you can stay long-term and just things like that. Um, he, he discusses, you know, what to do about showers and toilets and food storage and water storage and, uh, you know, electricity and everything. So I, if you really are just with no other options, I hate for people to feel like they have no other options. So please check that out. I mean, another option would be multiple roommates um, offering to pay a friend a reduced amount to stay at their house or something like that. I mean, try to be creative. So yeah, just check that out. I wish that we weren't so divided as a country and I hope that people stay safe um, and that we get through this, these tough times. Again, so in just in closing, remember that I'm an accident and injury lawyer in Florida. I am not an eviction lawyer. So please, as much as I would you know, like to help, I cannot help with evictions, have no experience with them and, and no ability to handle those cases. But I just wanted you to know what your options are. And lastly, please you know, like the video if you got any value out of this. And also um, please subscribe because what I'm trying to do, particularly between now and the election, is share my thoughts on legal issues in the news, which are maybe not getting as much of uh, attention, but really should be. And these involve mostly things related to safety, since I'm an injury lawyer, and how I feel our safety is being negatively impacted by a lot of what's happening in, in politics. So yeah, so please subscribe if that kind of content interests you. Please hit the like button and 
Until next time, please stay safe, happy, and healthy.